welcome to Insight today. Hey, it's good to be with you on another Thursday. Yeah, we are so stoked you guys are joining us again. Cheers to you. And to you. And to you. And um, let us know in the comments where you guys are from. Our theme verse, as you guys are typing, I'll tell you our theme verse. It's Daniel 12, 3. And it says, those who have insight will shine bright like the expanse of heaven and will lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And we're just stoked to have you guys with us. We're stoked that you are um, pursuing the heart of God alongside us and making it a priority in your life and in this season. Right and now. in this season. Yes, the Christmas season. And you know what? I am Rachel Tucker. I am, this is my dad, I am his youngest daughter, and it is a privilege to get to do this with you, Dad. Hey, well, wow. Dude, you shouldn't do that. You're gonna make me cry. Oh, gosh. Okay, anyway, hey, and it is an honor for me to get to do this with you. And so we wanna say thank you because guess what? It's an honor to get to do this with yeah. you. It really is. And so, um, yeah, tell us where you're from. Last week, uh, we did a session on about knowing the truth yeah. and about how truth pierces error. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to pick up kind of the heartbeat of God because we just have actually completed Hanukkah eight days of the festival of light, the multiplication of oil and of light. And so then we go now into the church season of Christmas. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were gonna stop. <laughs> well, I didn't know I was either. It's the way life is. And so, yeah, so a theme verse last week came from John chapter 8, verse 32, that you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I absolutely love so that verse. Because we read out of the Passion Translation, and it talked about embracing the truth. Yes. It was such a good defining difference. And if you guys didn't watch it, you guys can go back and watch it. We have a whole playlist on YouTube and on Facebook for all the insight videos that we've done, which we started in what, like April yeah. of this year. Right. And so we've been doing these, we have quite a few episodes now. You guys can go back and watch. But um, we do have the Passion Translation available right now. It is. I, I love just even that verse instead of like the truth, uh, you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set, set you free. It was talking about if you embrace the yeah. truth, like it just has this really unique way of making scripture so fresh for us. And so there's a God Encounters edition where dad, you wrote like 6,000 words intro for it. Um, and it's the New Testament. It is psalms proverbs and song of songs and so you guys can go to jamesgall.com there might be time to get one for a friend for a gift or yeah. your mother-in-law or yourself you know and free shipping in the united states and also a free music cd yeah yeah which you just had some new music come out oh yeah and you sing with me on one of the pieces of music, don't you, Rachel? I do. Yeah, it was super fun one night after tucking the kids in bed to just come on down to our studio and mm -hmm. sing some harmonies on that song. Yeah. yeah, but we do want to emphasize the holidays. And so I've been trying to pray into how could we do insight and yet at the same time be like, acknowledge the season that we're in so today we're going to be talking about the heartbeat of god and hearing his heartbeat which is beautiful i can't wait to hear dad are you ready yeah do you have a mug i do and 
mine, I chose, I don't know who made this one for me, but obviously it's pretty amazing. It, it looks very Christmassy, but it has a heart because one of the carols is, do you hear what I hear? I remember growing up in high school in choir singing that one. And it's just really um, amazing, you know, can be a fun piece of music. And so I think about music like that. Do you hear what I hear? But then, in a, but taking it in the fun style in which it's written, but then taking it over to like John the Beloved who was the disciple who laid his head upon the chest of the Messiah and asked the question, do you hear what I hear? I used to ask that question around the world. If you were John the Beloved and you laid your head like he did upon the chest of the Messiah at the Last Supper, what is it? that John the Beloved heard. So Rachel, what do you think John the Beloved, obviously, what did he hear when he laid his head upon the chest of the Messiah? I'm sure he heard Jesus's heartbeat. Yeah, I, I, I believe he heard two things in particular. He heard possibly, there, he felt a rising and a falling of the chest wall of the creator of the universe as wind or breath as breath was coming in and out so he might have heard breath in him we live and breathe and have our very being i think john the beloved would have heard if he really listened the breath of god the wind of god the rhythm of life, the rise and the fall of the expansion that happens to a chest when wind breath enters it. That's one thing. I love that. But the one that is the most obvious is hearing the heartbeat of God. Let's pray. Oh God, in this season that is delightful, can be terribly lonely for many people and kind of cluttered for a lot of people. And then in our chase of celebrations, almost miss you. And so we pause right now. Like a week before. And we go, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. And we go, oh, come let us adore him. And we sanctify ourselves. We set ourselves apart. And we're asking for your help and your grace to lead in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I have chewed and pondered on what would I like to share with you, what could we share together, I wish I actually was sitting at a fireplace for this session. Because what I want to create is an atmosphere of a fireside chat. I really do. And there's a verse that I love from John chapter 1 in verse 18. Now I'm going to read it from two different translations. John 1, 18. It's about hearing the very heartbeat of God. Now, Rachel, you get prepared because I'm going to bounce the ball to you in a moment. I am, of course, that's not unusual, folks. But listen to John 1.18. No one has seen a God at any time. The only 
begotten God, now listen to this phrase, who is in the bosom. What a weird word. <laughs> the Bible uses this word. It says that Jesus, the only begotten of God, that's Jesus. Where is he? Where was he located before he became flesh and dwelt among us? It says he was in the bosom. God, okay, God has a bosom. In the Old Testament, one of his names is El, El Shaddai. One of his names is the Albresti one because he's a nurturer. And look at John 1.18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. Now, pause. The Passion Translation of John 1.18. Listen to this. It's stunning. No one, this is incredible. No one ever before gazed upon the full splendor of God, except no one ever gazed upon the full splendor of God, except his uniquely beloved son, who is cherished by the Father and held close to his heart. Now that he has come to us, he has unfolded the full explanation of who God truly is. You see, in another place in the New Testament, it talks about that Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. So, this translation so beautifully portrays, I'm going to read it again because it's, it's not only poetic. You see, Passion Translation tries to communicate the way the language is called. It's encounter the heart of God. Amazing. So listen one more time. No one ever before gazed upon the full splendor of God except his uniquely beloved son who is cherished by the father and held close to his heart. Now that he has come to us, he has unfolded the full explanation of who God truly is. Stunning. And Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, he talked about the necessity or the desire that we maintain simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. And I want to be blunt honest. This last year, that's been pretty hard to do. At this last year, I think it's been pretty complex. It's been harder to do. With COVID, with economics, with racial tensions, with division, Sometimes you don't know what words that you use that trip someone else up that are offensive that you don't even know that they are, and they weren't previously necessarily, because things are so much more sensitized and fragile, or let alone the political arena. Now I'm re referencing in particularly the United States, but it's not just the United States. And so 2020 has been one, mm, like a landmine field to walk in. And so I think it's been 
a, a little harder to navigate in getting distracted. Distracted from what? Simplicity and purity and devotion to Christ. That Jesus really, really, really is the center of all things. I have to constantly dust myself off from distractions, worry, cares of this world, on and on. Okay, now, but I want to consider this phrase. What does it mean that Jesus came from the bosom of the Father? The Passion Translation helps us. Because it doesn't use the word bosom. It says, the heart of God. Like I was referencing early about John the Beloved, when he laid his head at the Last Supper upon the chest of the Messiah, I think he heard two things at least. The wind of God flowing in and out of the chest of the Creator, and he heard a heart beat. If there is no beating of a heart, there is no life. If there is a heart beat, it is a sign of life. What does it mean by the bosom of the Father? Jesus is the very heart of God. Jesus is the very heart of the Father. He's the exact representation of the Father. I thought about this for years because Jesus also said in John 14, he said, I go to I don't want this to be just good theology. It is good theology. I'm talking about this, a heart. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. So it makes, makes me ask some pragmatic practical questions. Where did Jesus come from? Where did he return to, and where has Jesus taken up residence, and where has Jesus promised that he will take us to, into the heart of God himself? Jesus came from the bosom of the Father. Jesus came from the heart of God. Jesus is the heart of God. I have chewed, pondered, prayed on this for years. I've come to the very simple conclusion, who is Jesus? Jesus is, is the heart of God. God. He comes to live in our hearts. And he comes to prepare a place for us that where, that where he is, there we may be also. Now, as a parent, let's say uh, you're expecting. I don't know what it was like a hundred years ago. But what a stunning, amazing thrill it is to have a sonogram done. Rachel, would you like to address that? Of course. We have two beautiful children. And especially with, um, with um, our firstborn, we had a lot more sonograms. 
um, partially because of the place I delivered at um, versus where our second was born. But we had these like 4D sonograms. Oh, cool. Which was crazy because we got to see her face structure. Wow. We're still today, if I look at that photo, I can see her face in it now. It's, it's the most unreal thing to think that there's a little human growing inside of you that one day you're like, oh, you're the same person. Huh? But I, I don't, I'm, I'm curious where you're heading, but there's also another heartbeat inside of you. And there's something just so beautiful about being able to hear a little heartbeat that's going on inside of you that early on oh, for sure really real i mean the scientific capacities today and the swishing there's even like apps nowadays that you can like download when you're like later in your pregnancy and you can like hear your baby's heartbeat <laughs> but there's this i don't know how to do it but And then with the degree of pictures, you can actually hear, right? For sure. What's it like, Rachel, to carry a child? <laughs> no. What's it like? And, and you're pregnant, and you know you're pregnant, but it's like, am I really pregnant? And then... I would say it's surreal because you don't, every day that goes by, you keep convincing yourself that like if you're nauseous or if you're tired or all of those things that it's for a reason mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, yeah, there's a person inside of me. But when you actually see them and you actually hear their heartbeat, it's surreal. It's kind of like a shock in the face to realize, no, wait, this is actually real. And you get a glimpse of who they are before you even fully meet them. And that's a cool thing too, is asking for God's heart for your kids even before you fish, really meet them or but what you, he says about their lives. What? No, but you are meeting them. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because they already are. Yeah. They are. They already are in the heart of God. The beautiful thing about life. And God is allowing you into the invitation as a parent to be a co-creator with God. Well, it's interesting because Jesus, so if Jesus is the image, if he's the heartbeat of God, and we're made in God's image, aren't we also the heartbeat of God? There we go. And if Jesus came from the bosom of the Father, which he did, and if Jesus, Passion Translation says he is the heart of God, and if the heart, then if the heart of God lives in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and he lives where? By faith in our heart. Our heart now beats in rhythm with God's heart. It's amazing. It is. So I go back to, as a parent, the thrill, because I do remember the pulsating rhythm of the heart of an unborn child. And I do think about the Christmas carol. Do you hear what I hear? Now, I'm going to read just a little bit from this book, The Lost Art of Practicing His Presence, because I talk about these concepts. So listen to this, hearing the heartbeat of God. The heartbeat is a sure sign of life. As long as the heart is beating, life is present. Jesus Christ is for us, the very heartbeat of the Father. 
You'll remember how John the Beloved, the apostle, reclined on the breast of Jesus during the Last Supper. John had the privilege of hearing the heartbeat of God. And later John would write, no one, the one who laid his head upon the chest of the Messiah was the one who wrote. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, who is the bosom of the Father. He has explained him. Jesus, who is the bosom of the Father, he is the Father's heartbeat. He has explained him. Through Jesus, we know the Father. When the Father sent Jesus to us, he sent his very best. He sent his heart. Guys, gals, all around the world. I know you know this. But God's greatest present to us is God's presence with us. And God's greatest present through us is God's heart expressed to others through us. You cannot want, can be one who doesn't just sing. Do you hear what I hear? But you can live a life that exemplifies like a John the Beloved. You can be a John the Beloved who leans in and maybe all you have maybe all you have to do is take 5 take 5 i have a practical word of wisdom for some of you take 5 uh, and all the busyness take 5 pause take 5 and say law i don't want you to do anything I want you to pause, take five, pause, and be, and be, just be with him for a while, because guess what? Not only is God's greatest present to us is his presence, do you know what your greatest present to God is? Shoot, I'm about to cry. Do you know what your greatest present to God is? Your presence. Do you know what God's greatest present to you is? His presence. Do you know what your, one of your greatest presents to God is? Your presence. Man, I feel like going, this is James W. Gall with God Encounters Ministries with Insight. We'll see you later. <laughs> we absolutely can. I wanted to add one, one thing. Um, so there's four different kinds of love. Yeah. There is Eros which is like the romantic kind of love. There's philia. I may not be saying all of these correctly. It's like the love of friends and things like that. Storge is the love of parents for children. And then agape is the love of mankind. And as you've been talking about leaning into the bosom, the heartbeat of God, and we're also talking about babies. Yeah. I, it is so important, studies have shown it is so important for a baby to have skin to skin with the mother and the father right when, after they've been born. And we've done that with both of our children and I've seen, seeing McKendry, the, talk about the father, the, the storge, fa the father heart, holding his little girl 
to his heart, skin to skin, feeling the rise and the fall. There you go. That's it. And her body temperature being uh, matched with his. Right. Being equalized, coming in sync coming. with the heart rate and with the temperature and with the right that and in how important is it to have that storge love where we we experience the father's heart we experience the father's love where he holds us to his heart and i think that's what it is it's an invitation and this time like you said take five i literally am seeing like mckendry holding our little kids you know and um taking that 15 minutes and having skin to skin and having an intimate moment with their father and, and, and for some maybe we just need to adjust that a little because there's different cultural aspects sure. and maybe it's not skin to skin okay and and so i understand that in your relationship i you know obviously i really do but, but the issue is, it's embracing, yeah. it's holding, it's caressing, it's nurture. Yeah. Where, and it's a form of actually rocking, where you're in oneness, in union, where the child becomes secure in love yeah so laura we just want to say um we want to pause even now we pause and we thank you for your presence we thank you for your heart for <sighs> your heart and giving us your greatest gift god and we want to reciprocate our hearts back to you god show us times where we can do that more and more Throughout the day, Lord, we can press into you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we are so grateful for the opportunities all around the world and through media like this that we can pause and we can say, we want to draw near to God as he gave his gift of his presence to us. And so we, in turn, want to offer a gift back to God. Our presence with him. I present a challenge and an invitation and for whatever reason, it's so simple and pragmatic. That's what's dropped into me. Take five. You can do it at a lunchtime. Wake up five minutes earlier. Stay up five minutes later. I don't know. You can find it. Take five. And just be. Because God's presence to us is his great present to us. But let's flip it. Do you want to give a gift to God? One, I love giving gifts. And I have made a determination. I want to give a gift to God. I don't only want to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Although I've written about it, I know about it, I believe in all of it. I'm going to do a series on my podcast about it. But I want to give a gift. And I want to challenge you to do the same. I want you to give a gift to God of your presence. He wants you because you 
If you know Jesus, he's in you, and the Father is jealous over you. So I give you an invitation and a challenge that do you hear what I hear? God's heartbeat wants to echo to you and through you to others, but also as an expression of love to God himself. Okay. Good. I love it. And um, so we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us today. Of course, Christmas is next week. We will have just a short little Merry Christmas for you next week. Um, but you will hear uh, a clip or a, a, one of Dad, one of your new songs at the end of this. It's from his new EP called Christmas Wonderland. And you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, mm -hmm. all the things. Yep. Um, so uh, if, I know you guys are going to want to listen to it more after you hear this one song. And then also we have the Passion Translation uh, Bible, which is available at jamesgall.com. Uh, great gift. We'll go snag some of those. Uh, just go to jamesgall.com. You can find those. And of course, we would love to have you partner with our ministry. And if you would like to do that, you can uh, click on the description uh, that or a link in the description to give through our website. There's also text to give if you live in the US. And if you are watching on Facebook, there's a little donate thing that gives to the ministry. We wanna thank you guys so much and we just pray blessings over you and enjoy your time with God in this season. And we will do a short little presentation on Christmas Eve and have a like a, a little present kind of offering, you know, for you there. And so we look forward then because then we'll do a special then broadcast on New Year's Eve. So blessings to you and may you have a very Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come, ye, O oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Yes.